In recent years, Philip Seymour Hoffman and John C. Riley have emerged as two of Hollywood's most talented and versatile actors. They are perhaps best known for their roles in the Paul Thomas Anderson film, Part 8, Boogie Nights, and Magnolia. Now they have teamed up again, this time sharing Broadway. They alternate playing the leading roles of two feuding brothers in Sam Shepard's 1980 play, True West. Here is a clip. I'm going to have somebody coming by here later, Lee. Ah, oh, a lady friend? No, a producer. Ah, uh -huh, what'd you produce? Film, movies, you know. Movies, motion pictures, big wig, huh? Yeah. What'd you come by here for? We have to talk about a project. What do you mean a project? What's a project? A script. Well, that's so you're doing all those papers there. Yeah. You know, what's, what's the project about? We're, uh, it's a period piece. What's a period piece? Look, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we need to discuss this alone. Oh, I mean, I get it. you want me out of the picture. No, not exactly. I just need to be alone with him for a couple hours so we can talk. You're afraid I'll embarrass you. I'm huh? not afraid you'll embarrass me. <clears throat> Look, why don't you give me the keys to your car, and I'll be back here around 6 o'clock or so. Does that give you enough time? I'm not loaning you my car, Lee. You're going to get lost, huh? Take a hike, is that it? A pound the pavement for a few hours, or you both weighing a million look, bucks? Look, look, look. It's gonna be tough enough for me to face this character on my own without. You don't know this guy? No, I don't know. He's a producer. I mean, I've been talking to him for months, but you never get to know a producer. Wait, you're trying to hustle him, is that it? No, I'm not trying to hustle him. We're trying to work out a deal. It's not easy. What kind of deal? Convince him it's a worthwhile story. He's not convinced? How come he's coming over if he's not convinced? I'll convince him for you. You don't, you don't understand the way things work down here. How things work down here? The play has earned both performance Tony nominations as best lead actor in a play. Joining me now, Philip Seymour Hoffman and John C. Riley. Welcome. Thanks, Charles. Thanks. Great to have you here. Nice uh, did you want to do this in the beginning? Uh, Be or because you've done it in college, because everybody of your generation is probably... Did I... I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it in the beginning. No, I, uh, John had called me about it. I had heard about it through friends because it was all of a sudden true rescue on Broadway. And, yeah. you know, it spread like wildfire through the acting community. But, uh, and I was kind of like, and I knew they were going to do both parts. And that, that didn't seem to me like a good idea at first. And I was kind of taking back. Then John met the director and he called me. And then when after I talked to John, and John was interested because he had met Matthew and reread the play, and I respect John so highly, I, 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 Reread the play again and met Matthew, and after those two experiences, was sold on the idea. If and it wasn't John, you wouldn't have done it. I, I don't think so. I can't <laughs> think of it, and I mean that. I, I, I don't. I, you know, if John didn't call me, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. And now that I've gone through it with him, I, I, I can't imagine anybody else that I would have done it. With. I really can't imagine anybody else that I would have been able to work so intimately with under these circumstances of rehearsing both parts at the same time and then playing mm -hmm. them. I just. I think it takes a rare combination to pull it off and still, you know, be able to leave the theater at night uh, saying goodbye and wishing uh, goodwill on the person, you yeah. know, I mean, it's in, you know. How do you explain this? I mean, this, there is a kind of something brotherly, fellow actorly, chemistry, something between the two of you. How do I explain that? Yeah, what is it? I, I mean, it's more than it just is. mutual respect, isn't it? Yeah, there's a, I have an affinity for Phil creatively, too. And I, I don't know where that comes from. I mean, when I first saw Phil's work, I immediately recognized some kind of common ground. And in my own egotistical, sort of conceited actor way, I feel like Phil is really my only peer. You know, he's some, who's my age and who, you know, who does the sort of work that I do. And so when Matthew asked me who could play my brother, because he liked what I did, that this, this reading that I did with him, and the first name out of my mouth was Phil, and pretty much after that I was sort of stumped, you know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know where that affinity comes from, because we come from different parts of the country, and I guess we trained in sort of similar circumstances, yeah. uh, conservatory of acting kind of situations, but um, the affinity also comes from spending time together yeah. as a result of Paul Anderson, you know? He's sort of made us part of this family and uh, you know we just will Anderson ever make a movie that the two of you don't appear in <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably will someday and really enjoy it yeah. <laughs> he'll be like no you're not in this yeah. one <laughs> yes, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, the end of that yeah, but, uh, we'll torture us about it <laughs> yeah, exactly. we'll Thank torture you, I'm, him too I'm thinking yeah, about yeah. a movie and I'm not sure it's right for you guys yeah yeah he'll do something <laughs> like that but, uh, but no I mean we I think we all really enjoy working together on those films. I don't think we've had 
a bad experience. I mean, I have, it's just yeah. great working with you guys. So. I want to, there's so much to talk about. Let me just talk about what everybody does. So. I want to, there's so much to talk about. Let me just talk about what everybody talks about, which is this notion of playing alternative role. Is it more difficult than you thought it would be? Less difficult? Uh, do you enjoy it more than you thought you might? I mean, is it surprising? All of those things. I, I enjoy it more than I thought I would. Uh, it was very difficult to start. With the, the thing, it's funny, the things that I thought were going to be very difficult turn out to be sort of easy and, and things that inspired me. And the things that I, uh, that I thought would be easy were a lot more difficult. Like, the most difficult thing for me was memorizing the play. Yeah. You essentially have to memorize the entire play. And, and it was uh, this odd thing would happen in rehearsal. You'd, you'd work on a scene in, in one configuration and really feel like you're getting somewhere with the character and really start to get confidence. And then it'd come time to switch, and it'd be like this huge blow. Like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing as yeah. this other guy. Yeah. So, um, But and the alternating really... Um, it allows us to be a lot more physical and just a lot more strenuous with our voices and our bodies and our motions and everything because you know, well, I don't have to do that yeah. eight times a week. Only, you know, because if you're playing the same role, you'd be testing and challenging the same muscles all the time. Exactly. Yes, yes that's exactly. it. Yeah. yeah, and it's also, I think, a, a freedom of... Uh, of uh, you see what he said, what John said was right about the, the vocal and the physical, but uh, and uh, it's a freedom of the psyche, too, for me. It's just... Uh, but both parts play on the mind differently, you know. And I really do think this play is a play of, of from the id. I think it I mean, yeah, more than most plays I've been into. It. I always I was saying to uh, Robert Lapone, who plays Saul in the play the other day, that that really this play can hold any emotion, almost at any time. It, it's it's why because because things will come up in you in different parts of the play to seem like oh this isn't accurate, but it, all of a sudden it just goes into the play. Sam's play just. Uh, can hold so much almost at any juncture in the play because of its nature, you know. So playing both parts gives you a chance to not have to live in that, that the, the psyche yeah, of that character yeah. too, you know, which is also uh, good on your the strain of uh, of the play. Well, it know? keeps you fresh too. You yeah, know, it yeah. keeps your mind alive. You don't get caught. If you get caught in a rut, it'll get broken up soon enough because you'll have to play the other guy, and then yeah. it's hard to remember that rut when you go back to that. Everybody who watches acting. Thinks yeah. it would be damn difficult to memorize lines. Okay. How much easier is it because you get inside a character's head, and right. therefore it comes easier? Yeah. Well, it's 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 a little more specific than for me than just inside the character's head. It's you get inside the head of the character in that circumstance, mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. I have a way of memorizing lines that. It's very hard for me to sit and put one hand over the words and try to memorize things by rote. I tend to memorize them physically almost. Yeah. And like it's an it's a very holistic kind of like where my body is and where you know the the what my voice is doing and it all kind of just imprints itself. I kind of absorb it. Mm -hmm. And um and that comes from just immersing yourself in the situations and and if and the, it's funny the hardest things to memorize are the things that don't feel honest. Yeah. And when you haven't quite cracked a situation correctly, that's what the words seem like, oh, this is repetitive and I can't, I, I just can't get this. And usually it's because you haven't solved yeah. the moment. That's you see it the same true. way. That, oh, absolutely. That's exactly the truth. I mean, that's why memorizing things by rote to, for me never works either because you get to rehearsal and every, you, you start to act. And, yeah. and if you're not uh, working on the scene or you haven't cracked it, like John said, that, that notion of cracking or really getting at the truth of something or really personalizing it as specifically as you can, and then expressing it yeah. to, as colorfully as you can, uh, the words won't come to you. They just won't. They, they're, they're just words on a page, and so they stay on the page. Yeah. Uh, but now it's funny because now we've been doing it for four months. I mean, there's times on the stage where, you know, four pages of dialogue went by, and it just went by. That's true. I mean, it, meaning it just goes. It just goes right from the gut, right out into the air, yeah. like yeah. in a way that is. As strenuous it is to do it for four months, is these moments on the stage after doing it for four months that are just uh, beautiful because the lines aren't even a thought. You both are right now at, at the peak of, of what any actor would like to be, much in demand for movies, interesting parts, uh, considered the best character actors around. Um, Why don't I feel that way? You don't feel that way. <laughs> Um, Why don't I feel that way? You don't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You just said you are. It's the actor's <laughs> plight. You know, I'll never work again. Yeah. But I mean, does 
despite all that attention from Hollywood, from films, is this the best thing, having a chance to play with somebody who you Absolutely. admire? Absolutely. There's no question. With I words mean, that you admire from a gifted... Yeah, friend. I mean, Sam's a genius, and in some way, I've, I've said this before, talking about the play, in some ways it feels like all of my work to date has, has prepared me for this moment. Mm. And it's not like I wasn't one of those, I've been acting since I was about eight years old, but I was never someone who thought, I'm going to be the world's greatest actor, and I, you know, I didn't like watch the Tonys every year, or, you know, I didn't, all I knew was that I liked to act, and I always just com continued to do it. And now that i found myself at this juncture, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, it's, the, I mean, the year 2000 began, and I'm, and here I am on Broadway with Phil, and there's just this incredible thing organically grew up out of, you know, just like this notion, this ambitious notion. So, yeah, I mean, although that's not to say that we haven't had really satisfying experiences working with Paul, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. His movies, in a way, are like, are like being a part of a, a repertory stage company because he, we all know each other really well, and there's a lot of collaboration there, and... Yeah, it's a, yeah. But, but, I feel, but I feel like my natural home as an actor here. is on the you stage. Too, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's what's how I studied. It's when I when I left school, I never thought I was gonna do film. I mean, I really didn't. I, I grew up watching. The, uh, I got interested in acting by watching theater as a kid. Not if I watch film was something I watched. and was like, wow, look at those guys. So it, it was completely not. I did. I, I was. Like, I never thought I'd ever be of that world. So have now, you ever gone to Paul and said, why don't you make a? Why don't you write? Since he writes his own stuff, write a play. Well, A, write a play, yeah. or B, write a movie for us. I mean, a movie in which you... you, you, you <laughs> why, why are you laughing? Thank you, Charlie. You know, cause we, all, we, 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 we joke with Paul about that at all. It's like, we do. He's like, dude, why do you always hey, have dude. to have some superstar <laughs> exactly. in there? Come on in. We don't need up. Tom Cruise. What, we we can carry up? a movie. Come on. Well, we are the best of our generation, fill in the blanks. Well, and how about a movie for us, right? Uh, yeah, as well. respected as we are, though, <laughs> it, it doesn't mean like, you know, you say Phil Hoffman and John Riley to a studio executive, you know, the dollar signs don't light up in their eyes yeah, at this yeah. point. So there's, there's that market for us, you know. And, yeah. and I, I did mention about writing a play to Paul once, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, uh, but then you guys would be doing what you want every night, and uh, it's like <laughs> the know, lack of control nuts. really, <laughs> it, it really took the shine off it for him. <laughs> All right, take a look at this. This is a clip with you playing with, with uh, you're playing the role of Austin, you're playing the role of Lee. Here it is. I'm going to have someone coming by here later, Lee. Oh, lady friend? No, a producer. Oh, producer. What's he produce? Film. Movies, you know. Oh, movies, motion pictures, a big wig, huh? Yeah. What's it coming by here for? We gotta talk about a project. What do you mean a project? What's a project? A script. Oh, that's what you're doing with all those papers. Yeah. Now, what's your project about? We're, uh, it's a period piece. What's a period piece? All right, look, it doesn't matter. The main thing is we need to be alone for a while. I mean... You want me out of the picture, is uh, that it? No, not exactly. I just need to be alone with them for a couple of hours so we can talk. Yeah, you afraid I'll embarrass you? I'm not afraid you'll embarrass me, Lee. Tell you what, why don't you give me the keys to your car? I'll be back here around 6. that give you enough time? No, I'm not loaning you my car, Lee. Oh, you want me to just get lost, is that it? Just take a hike. Just pound the pavement for a couple of hours while you bull your way into a million bucks. Look, it's going to be hard enough for me to face this character on my own without having to... You don't know this guy? I don't know. He's a producer. I mean, he, I've been talking to him for months, but you never get to know a producer. Are you trying to hustle him? Is that no, it? No, I'm not trying to hustle him. I'm trying to work out a deal. It's not easy. What kind of deal? Convince him it's a worthwhile story. He's not convinced? What's he coming by here for? If he's not convinced, I'll convince him for but you. You don't understand how things work down here. How do things work down here? What do you think? <laughs> it's odd watching yourself. I've never, seen, you know, we. I don't. Have you seen this before? Yeah, I've seen those clips. Have you uh, seen them back juxtaposition right together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have actually, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Bizarre. Yeah, like, like I said, they shot those before. Uh, yeah, there's no audience there. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're real tired. Come kind of see the show. <laughs> Come see the show. Come on. But but you, when I saw it, you were playing Lee. Most people that I know say you've got to go back and see it with the roles exchanged. Yeah. Do you? Prefer one or the other? That is the million dollar question. I know. It is the million dollar question. I, you know, I think there was, a t there was a time when I was, just like John said, there's times when you feel more confident about one part over the other. It changes for me, though. It changes. So 
in the end, I don't prefer one part or the other. It changes depending on what. Depe God, it, it, like I said, the thing with theater is that it's, it really is this living organism. And I hate to put it in that way, but that's the only way I can put it. It's, it's like, it's just moving, water light, it just, and you're trying to stay with it. And things will change. I'll, you'll go through a week where one part seems to be just playing itself fine. And the next week, the other part seems to be playing itself, at least for me. And, and so I can't say that I prefer one over the other because uh, I know people that have seen both versions and preferred one version over the other, and then two weeks later, uh -huh. more people are preferring the other version over the other. You know, you, can, you just, that's the way, and that's the beauty of it. And that's the beauty of why theater is something to be experienced live. You but know? you are saying your friends don't prefer you in one or the other. No, it, it, it depends on the show. Yeah. You know, it depends on the show they saw. Was that show more alive than another show? You know? Everyone says when they see the play the first time, no matter which version they see, they say, I can't imagine it the other way. I just can't no, imagine it. That's what I said. Exactly you seem perfectly cast in the way you right. are. Then they come back and they're just like, they have these yeah. stunned and expressions. When I saw the but. clip that we did in the introduction, Nah, it just was perfectly natural, even though I couldn't imagine it, having seen you as Lee. Right. Well, it's, it's almost like choosing between two children yeah. of yours, you know what I mean? Once yeah. you get to know these guys as well as we've gotten to know them, it seems like a cruel thing to choose one or the other. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just, I have so much love for both of them. Yeah. Shepard was by for the beginning, huh? He was there for a week of rehearsal and for a week of performance uh, leading this, up to the opening night. Did he add to it? Did he did he get involved? Was Absolutely. He, yeah, yeah, he did. He was great. He gave us he gave us he didn't rewrite anything. He added lines here and there, like little lines and yeah. additions. I think really just for him the tempo beats of things, like he could feel that it needed a little something extra in, in the end. And then he was just incredibly supportive and helpful in giving us some really personal anecdotes about himself com in comparison to the play and then when he came and saw the play in previews and stuff again uh, a gem of an individual with his support and uh, his saying I'm behind this it was I, like doing a Shakespeare play and having Shakespeare come say you guys are doing a great <laughs> job yeah, or, that's just what I meant or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just a little bit like this or something does mm. he do oh, that? oh yeah or? absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. in fact in, in his play there's uh, there's only two Lees, like, after, well, the, the, right, the, right, the, yeah. the, well I'm not going to, anyone hasn't seen it, but Austin backs up and says, it's supposed to say Lee, Lee twice, and I remember after he saw it, he's like, he's like, good, 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 and he came up to me, and I played Austin that night, and he's like, I think there's a third Lee, <laughs> and there wasn't, he's like, no, I think I added one, though, I think I, after, he was like, like, in front, and I had all these friends there who had seen the show, and they're all like, hey, congratulations, and there's Sam Shepard saying, they're going, I think there's one more Lee, like, in front of everybody, and everyone's like, Ooh, still screwed up. But uh, but he is. I can't say enough about him. Yeah. He's incredible. He, I mean, he gave us he gave us like this incredible stamp of approval by, and and just like authenticity by telling us things like there's this one monologue in the play for anyone who's seen it about the father losing his teeth, mm -hmm. and he said, well, that happened my to father. my father. That's right. exact. That story is verbatim. And then at the end of the monologue, that Austin says, now that's a true story, true to life. And so it gives us this this license to say to the audience, you know, truthfully, that is a true story. Because we know mm -hmm. Sam told us it's a true story. There's all kinds of little moments like that, you know. Is this play about, I'm not sure what Sam has said, is it about that there are two parts to all of us and that the double parts in all of us? What's it about? It seems to be that. I mean, if you Is that think, the essence of it? I mean, I realize they all He told it. us that he wrote this play in his mother's house outside of Los Angeles while she was vacationing in Alaska and sat down at a typewriter and a and a bottle of whiskey and tried to write this play in two weeks. <laughs> so it would seem that that's exactly what it is, a dissection of someone's psyche, or a bisection of someone's psyche. Because Phil and I switch, it causes yes. a natural balance to occur. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's And if a good we were point. playing one-on-one, -on -one, it's, you know, Lee's the aggressor for a lot of the play, and he's, he is, like, sad sadistically going after Austin a lot of times. So, so therefore could, it's a more memorable part. Well... It's, it would be easier for the so. balance no, no. To, to get out of whack. If, if you're playing one part over and over and you're just going at this guy every night or, you know, it's, it would be... So, I don't, yeah. because Phil and I are switching, I go at him, but I go at him with the knowledge that he's going to be going at me in three performances. <laughs> you know, so it's this constant... Yeah, but, but, yeah, and, it, and it works for the yeah, play because the play is meant play. to be balanced. Yeah. You know, it's meant to be balanced it's, that way. Yes. So balance is good, so switching yeah. may be good. The more balanced the, the show that you see, the better show you're seeing, definitely. 
Yeah. Do you ever pick up something he's doing so when you play the role later, you might add it to your... You know, principle. sometimes, and I, osmosis is a bad word, but sometimes, osmotically, I mean, I, <laughs> seriously, that sometimes things happen, yeah. you know, and you're like, wow, that was kind of similar. But mostly, I think, because of the rehearsal process and because of the way that we portray the characters quite differently, physically and vocally, and, and with the different types of energy, even, um, that even if something internal or thought-wise starts to, starts to come in the same area, it's always expressed differently. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. I think that's kind of what we meant to do in the it's first like place. It's like playing the same know? note with, with like a, a saxophone and a trumpet. It's like, as much as you try to mimic the trumpet, you're a saxophone. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like, absolutely. I realized that early on. It's like, I shouldn't worry <laughs> too much about copying <laughs> Phil because even if I deliberately tried to copy every single thing he's doing, it would come out totally different yeah, anyway. Because if I'm doing it honestly and it's coming from me, it's just, it's just yeah. going to be different. And also to do, be different just to be different yeah. doesn't benefit the play either. Yeah. Because if something's found that works better for the play, it works better for the play. Yeah. And we both, and in the and now we really find things together. You, you find them on the stage together. You can't find them by yourself. How different a play is this now, in the end of May, than it was at the beginning of January? Um, it seems real different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the there was no audience. You weren't feeding up an right. audience. Yeah, yeah. You weren't into it. That's just. It's hard for me to be objective about but that. But do you think it is? I mean, do you think that you've gotten into it, that there's much more complexity and levels that, or do you get it and you lock it in and that's it? No, we're not those kind of actors, I don't think. I think we're constantly trying to find the truth every night, so I think there's a, a natural growth that has occurred, yeah, yeah, in terms of putting it into words and telling you exactly what that might be. I, it just feels deeper to me. It yeah. feels like, you know... Like, the play is kind of like a quick moving river, you know what I mean? And early on, it was just, just, just trying to stay afloat and just trying to not hit a boulder or something. And now, you know, the river's still very swift, but. Yeah, you know what? I had, I, in the last month, I've seen Copenhagen, True West, and The Real Thing. And every one of them, you could go back and back and figure you'd get something out of them you didn't see the first time yeah. or hear the first yeah. time. That's good. That's which is what, in the end, yes, it right. ought to be. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can constantly feed because it goes by, because it's fast, because the writing is so powerful. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Have you had, last year was the best year, had to be from, a, from acting, the best year of your life. It was... Uh, Pretty damn good. Yeah, it was good. But it, it's <laughs> good, but it, it, was, it was good. Uh, yeah, it was good. I, I don't want to say, I don't want to because it was it was a great year in terms of i don't know when you did them but movies that came out movies that came out and work that i did yeah but you know it's really acting is a, a weird thing because really the best acting is a day-to-day -day thing and the th and that's why doing the theater is so important to me because what does that mean day-to-day -day? Because, because you're only as good as what you're doing right then and i truly believe it and that's how I think of acting. It's like acting is not something that is put on a canvas that you can just put up on a wall and people can come by and see whenever they want to see it. Yeah. It's really what you do in that day with what you're acting. It's what you do on that day is when I'm satisfied. I'm as good as what I'm showing you right now yeah. because in the theater is something that will humble you in a second yeah. because you will be as bad as you can be at certain moments sometimes in the theater. And, and you can experience that and realize... I always got to get more. I always have to. So even though it's a good movies year, you seem a little bit that. past tense. You know, yeah. when you look at your work in a movie, and as good as it might have been, it feels a little bit like, yeah, that's where I was yesterday. Wasn't that great yesterday? <laughs> but it's, yeah. it seems irrelevant <laughs> in a way yeah. to you as an artist. You know? yeah. But isn't it nice you can go back and pill it, and you can go back to it, though? I mean, there's something on the other yeah. hand, flip it over, that it is there, like a painting. Proud of it. You're yeah. very proud of it. you can look it. and you say, you know, maybe I could be better tomorrow, and maybe not. But for one moment in time, there is something I'll yeah. always be pleased and proud about. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Very, very proud of it. It's great for the lazy side of myself, too. It's like, <laughs> got that one. Yeah. But, but are you actually saying that there are moments, and more than moments, in which in the performance of True West, you're just not good? Well, no, I'm saying that there are, there are in theater, that you do eight times, you do eight, eight shows a week, and you do it over four and a half months, five months span of time, sometimes even longer, that the theater always put you in a position where you know you can be better. So I'm always being very drastic with what I was saying, meaning that you have, you have four shows in a row where you're like, I'm just kicking it, yeah, this I'm is kicking, it. this is fluid, I'm rocking. And then, and then all of a sudden, rocking. And, and then all of a sudden, Saturday matinee, you're like, car crash. A car crash happens on the stage, and you're like, 
oh my God, what was that? Like, like literally you revert to the embryo of acting and you're like, I don't know anything. <laughs> and you go out and you have dinner in between shows and you're like, what? And it forces you to re-examine, re-ask all the questions again, go through everything again. It was, and that's what makes you a better actor. That's what makes me a better actor. It makes me keep getting better. And if I was just always going, well, that thing I just did wasn't that great, uh, happy, da da da, I wouldn't get any better. I'd probably get worse. I'd slowly get worse. So the theater always helps me remind myself that I don't know everything and that it is easy to slip and not act as well as you can and that you got to stay on top of your game. It's like that yeah. Zen mind, beginner mind. You know, always have to be thinking, like, I'm a beginner, I'm not an expert. Right. As soon as you go into the theater, think, I'm an expert, and we'll kill him with this line. <laughs> It's like, it's sure enough, crickets, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, what's the joy of doing it? When you look ahead, and you've reached this place wherever it is, both of you, in different ways and in different performances. When you look forward to something, what is it? Inha just the sheer joy of inhabiting a character and showing what you can do, what is it that turns it's, you on so much about what you do? It's play. And to look forward to next year and 10 years from now and 20 years from now. To me, it's that same feeling I got when I was eight years old of of just leaving this world behind for a second and that playful kind of suspension of disbelief you know it sounds really naive and sort of corny but that really is the feeling for me when I can forget who I am and forget myself and forget that I'm in the theater and and really connect with Phil and and we create something out of th out of thin air I mean that there's nothing like that. I mean, it's just, it's pure magic. It really is magic. And yeah. as, as much as people like joke around, oh, the magic of theater and how fruity that sounds, that's what it is, you know? It's really excellent. Yeah, the other night, it was a Saturday night or something, I literally got, we were probably an hour and a half into the play, we were at the toast scene, if you ever seen it. Yeah, it's that right, second to last right, scene. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I remember I like stopped in the middle, I didn't stop in the middle of the scene, but all of a sudden it came to my head, it's like, oh, that friend of mine's here tonight. <laughs> Uh, meaning that I went from the beginning of the play all the way to scene eight, and I was just in the play with John. Yeah. And, it, and it is a beautiful experience. Like, I didn't even think about that there are people out there, and the theater will give you that experience. That it's, it really is a magical thing to feel. It's really cool. One last scene. After coming home from Alaska, Lee and Austin's mother invites her sons to come see Picasso at the museum. Here's one last take. Oh, that reminds me, you boys will probably never guess who's in town. Try and guess. What do you mean, Mom? Take a guess. Somebody very important has come to town. <laughs> I read it coming down on the Greyhound. Somebody very important? <laughs> See if you can guess. You'll never guess. All right, Mom, we're trying <laughs> to... Picasso! Uh... Picasso is in town! Isn't that incredible? Right now. Picasso's dead, Mom. No, he's not dead. He's visiting the museum. I read it on the bus. We have to go down there and see him. Mom! It's a chance of a lifetime. Can you imagine if we just all go down there and, and meet him? All three of us. Well, I don't think I'm really up for meeting anybody right now. I I mean, I'm, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Picasso. <laughs> Picasso? You have never heard of Picasso? Austin, you've heard of Picasso. Mom, we're not going to have time. It won't take long. Look, we we'll just hop in the car and go down there. An opportunity like this doesn't come along every day. We're going to be leaving here, Mom. Oh. Yeah. You're both leaving? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you also want to take note of your fellow actors. Celia Weston. Yeah, Celia Weston, Weston and, and, and Robert Lupone, who are just, they're like, they're like the, uh, what do you call it, those re relief hitters in the baseball game when you need a guaranteed Pinch hitters home when run. you need somebody yeah, to come yeah, in exactly. and knock it out of the park for you. I mean, that's solid. a difficult thing yeah. to do, come into this living, moving thing and just smack one out of the park every night, and they really do, both of them. They do a wonderful job. Do directors make a difference? Yeah, this is, uh, Matthew Warchus is uh, fantastic. He, he's, uh, he's top notch, no doubt about it. He's sort of like the theater parallel to Paul Anderson in a way, to yeah. me. I mean, yeah, he has that yeah. same sensitivity for actors and incredibly fair. He was like our, our noble referee through yes. the whole thing. You know, Absolutely. he really, and it was his idea to switch roles and, 
to do it. Way sell both it. of you on the idea. Yes, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. True West is currently playing at the Circle in the Square. Philip Seymour Hoffman and John C. Riley will continue their roles until June 18th. Don't miss it. Thank you both. Pleasure. Thank Thanks, you, John. Both Tony Award nominees. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>